All right, thank you, thank you everyone for coming and joining us tonight with the uh, workshop. Uh, before we get started, Mr. Jerry Walker will lead us in prayer, and uh, please stand for the pledge after. Mm -hmm. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and Okay, we'll dive right in. Uh, first, and the only thing on our agenda tonight is the budget workshop. Mayor and, and City Council, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, for this budget workshop. Appreciate my staff who's here. Also, um, I mentioned that Brendan uh, Dennehy, his wife is testing, we think she tested positive for uh, COVID, which means he's home with her. I would like to say a late thank you to the Datamax, Lee and, and Mark. Charlie. Um, who are data max who agreed to come over and uh, run the system tonight. Also, just a, a mention, honorable mention to Robert LaCroix, who works with us. He happens to also know how to do the uh, mix, mixer over there for the microphone, so he tended to it last minute. So we really appreciate them. Um, this is, uh, after a year being here, this is really the first kind of a normal even though it seems hairy to Mikel and some of the guys, it's like a normal to me budget process where we met with you guys uh, back in May. Spent this time putting it together uh, in July, and we're here now to present a budget that is it's a proposed budget. It's it's balanced. Um, we'll go through it, and anything you, any changes you might want to make, either taking things out or putting things in, we. Uh, We'll do that tonight. Mikhail's got a uh, uh, PowerPoint that she'll take us through that just gives us a, a high view of the budget, very comprehensive view that kind of helps let you know where we are. And then any questions you have in any specific areas or budgets you want to look at or things, we'll do that. And then uh, and then we'll take that and, and make the changes, put it in final form and bring it back for public hearings in August and, and for a final vote at the end of August. So that's kind of where we are. I want to turn the time over to Mikhail and thank her. She's kind of been, um, well, she's been doing this pretty much by herself. We had a lot of input call from other department directors and so forth. As far as putting together the presentation and the book and stuff, it's her and some interns have been doing that. And I want to let her know how much I appreciate it. I know how much work it is. And uh, even if you have two or three or four people helping, but she's, she's, done a, a great job so thank you so without further ado let me turn it over to to uh Mikhail and she can uh, pull up her her uh, powerpoint and we'll go from there i want to thank y'all very much for allowing me to be here today and for uh, presenting this budget workshop to y'all um it's been a little bit more challenging for me this year, but um, I want to say thank you all to you all for giving me this opportunity to be here and to thank all of my department directors and the city manager for the help that they've given me on this um, budget. Um, I'm going to go right in. Um, who's, who's changing slides for me? Um, Y'all had asked me to, to look at what the reserves were. So our, our first look at the reserves on where we are. The general fund reserves um, are about $2.2 million. And that gives us right around 70 days. Looks like we're going to have about $150,000 um, to roll into reserves at the beginning of this year, at the end of this year. Um, we're looking at some possibilities of things that we might fund from this current budget from 2021 that we might move back and fund this year uh, to maybe reduce that amount that we roll in. 
but we're still that's still preliminary right now that's where we're looking at that will potentially fall, run into reserves if you remember let me ask you real quick what page now we're on so we can follow you on here um this is uh, you're talking about for the budget no this sure. is just a powerpoint that screen. i've kind of okay. this is a powerpoint i don't know which one of these microphones is working so which which microphone she using this one over here Okay, whichever one you want. Let, okay. Let me just say too, if you remember last year, we ended about three hundred thousand or three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars in the red from that budget this year. And of course, it took us a few months to figure that out, if you remember, because we didn't know where we started or anything. So I just point out that every budget, we will have a balance left when we get through. If we do it right, we budget it, and then we watch it throughout the year monthly finance uh, reports and uh, the, the staff keeps their stuff within the budget. We should have money to turn back in the general fund and we'll grow that fund. So, okay. I'll point that and, out. and for the, for this right now, we're just going to go in through to get an overview and we get done. We can go through the, the book if y'all, if y'all so choose after we have finished. For uh, water and sewer fund, we're, we're about $3.4 million, which is about 120 days in reserve. Um, we don't have any rollover expected in the water and sewer fund because right now we have several uh, water uh, projects that we have to, to fund, which we're certain currently at about $328,000, but there have been some pumps that have broken that we have to repair um, before we move forward. Um, to continue our water treatment plants and our wastewater plants to keep them operational. Um, but we do, uh, once we pay those out, um, we're still not sure what those expected costs are going to be. Then I'll have a better idea of where we're going to end up in the water and sewer fund. But right now we're sitting at about 328000 and after speaking with our utility operations manager, I know for a fact that that's, that balance is going to go down significantly. So I don't expect us to roll that balance in. Um, in fact, it's probably going to be closer to around 150 to 120, if anything at all, after we uh, repair those those water pumps um, and things that have gone out over at the over at the utility uh, department. Uh, Mikhail, so in the general fund is 70 days. Is that a good number of days for reserve? Are you it, comfortable it's a very, with that? I'm very comfortable with that. I'd like us to get around 75 days, just to be a very solid number. Um, but we're we're very healthy and very comfortable with 70 days a lot of cities have 60 days so the fact that we have 70 days is, is almost 10 days you know really healthy into the reserve i'd line. like to, to add in that i don't think really really healthy uh, she and i disagree on that 60 days is not a good idea i think more like 90 days three months because there's three months in the summer before where the revenue runs out i think if you remember you all said this is at about 20 percent uh, you all said we want to build it up to about 25%. And, uh, and and I tell you, the rating companies, which we just talked to today, they like to see it at 25 or 30%. And then anything over, if we ever get a fund balance that's over 25 or over 30, then we can use that money as we start the budget year, put back in the budget to buy a one-time items kind of thing, not, not people, but, but items, and try to keep it at 30 but as we budget the year, keep in mind, we'll budget for the year and we'll have it at the level we want. And then as we start the year, the other year ends and we end up dumping whatever's left over back in it so it increases again. So it's it's healthy once we get it up there to use some of it every year for one-time items to keep it so it's not going up to 50, 60, 70%. And we don't have to raise taxes to buy stuff. We can use the fund balance, but we don't use all to do some things. So, but again, I uh, one of these times we hadn't really talked about that. I really think that uh, three months at 90 days or and even 30 percent is a good idea, and the rating companies love it. We decided we talked had this discussion with y'all if you remember, and you guys decided you thought you'd try to shoot for 25 percent. This is at about 20 percent. Real quick, so 70 days is like the norm. So with water and sewer, is 120 above and beyond, or is that the norm as well? well and yeah. water and sewer fund is a little bit different than um, general fund. Water and sewer fund relies on um, water revenue because, you know, you have your wet years, you have your dry years. So 120 days is industry standard for the water and sewer okay. fund. 
The 120 days for them is in the wintertime, if you think about it, because we got revenue pouring in in the summer. In the wintertime, it's not so much. So. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll get into some general fund revenues now. Um, I, I know you probably have seen this graph before. Sales tax is the largest uh, revenue stream in the general fund at 32%. Property tax is around 26%. Um, the other smaller uh, revenue sources make up the rest. Um, in 2019, it, entered, it uh, increased by 4%, generated about 200000 In 2020, it increased around 8%, generated um, a little bit more than that, about 250000 through the six months. Um, this past month, we, we dropped about 2%, and, and we were right around the 6% in a mark, um, and it still continues to be the largest revenue source for the city. Um, when we went into the 2021 sales tax budget, we were looking at where we wanted to be. Um, while it still continues to be the largest source of revenue, I didn't want to in budget too much of an increase into 2021. So we decided to just keep a flat budget going in. And so we kind of budgeted the same for 2021. We now, budgeted the same that we ended up that, that we we'll, ended up that we with. project will end up with for 2021. We we've been about eight percent this year higher than last year, but we're going to keep that flat for this next year, not knowing what COVID does. But so far we've done pretty well. Even in the worst months, we were two percent above last year. Um, we received the certified appraised values, um, and they came in at about. When we originally got some of the certified appraised values, we were expecting them to come in a lot higher, and we were budgeting those numbers based on that. Our final numbers that we came, that came in were only 2.4%, and most of that was due to new improvements. So we saw very little um, in the way of actual increase in values. When the original um, values came out, um, I'm guessing a lot of people protested in the... Um, Appraiser went back and looked at those values and ended up lowering them a lot more than what they would have lowered them had COVID not come around. And that, that kind of hit us on the, the double whammy side as far as what our revenue projections were going to be. Um, but property tax for us is about 26% of our revenue. Um, and it has our tax rate has remained the same rate for the, ta for the last two years. And before that, it was a constant rate for the five years. Um, it stayed at 0.3437, and then it was at 3712. Um, the prior year m and we decreased it a little bit to kind of pick up some of the park debt so we wouldn't have to increase the rate um, when the rate went up from 0.577 to 0.0696. And the reason that the actual rate went up two years ago was when they, they did that park debt. So we went up from the 0.3437 to the 0.3712 to, to incur that. Um, park debt. This year, we will actually take on the operations of that park, so we will have to increase some of our operations a little bit for that park. Uh, we, I have taken those and did some preliminary calculations of the tax rate. Um, last year's adopted rate is the first column. You'll see that um, we had a total tax rate of 3712 with our m and operations of 0.3463. Based on that, the effective rate or the no new tax rate now is looking at 3410 um, with a M&O rate of 0.2923 is what our adjusted M&O rate is after the sales tax adjustment comes in. It brings a total rate if we leave the cemetery rate the same and we have to um, adjust for the fact our INS rate's going up a little bit. It leaves our total rate at 0.3652 is what our effective rate would be. Um, if you look at what the rollback rate would be for um, the voter approval rate, again, that voter approval rate is calculated on 3.5%. Uh, um, that would bring us at 0 0.3901 or a MNO rate of 0 0.3171. Put that in English. What does that mean? Okay, so um, the tax rates that 
they're saying would um, based on a two and a half percent increase that would they're saying would generate the same amount of revenues last year is 0.3652 that's based on the appraisal rate two and a half percent increase in the valuation with the with the two and a half percent evaluations but for us because we have to send a little bit more over to the debt service side that's going to decrease the amount we have on the general fund operation side because our debt the amount that we have to pay the debt rate went up just a little bit we're, we're still trying to catch up by we're not putting all the park debt in the debt service but this is the last year for that i think right and then the other one is the actual maximum amount that we can go for the rollback which we were doing just uh, the voter the three and a half percent with the new rules um three and a half percent rate would be 0 0.3901 which would be the maximum amount you would go without voter approval now we can go above that because it's a disaster year I didn't calculate that. I didn't know if y'all would be interested in seeing what the actual maximum amount we could take with the disaster rate. Um, the legislator has said for the next two years, because they've declared a disaster, we could actually take another 5% with the disaster rate. What they said was, if you remember, we could go up to 8%. That was our cap in the years past. They came back this year and said, because of the COVID, we adopt the eight percent we can adopt the eight percent this year and again next year based and I, I think we told you that but based on your instructions to us we, we didn't do that the law says our new cap is three and a half percent we could go up to three and a half percent this year but again uh, the governor came out and the legislature said we could take eight percent this year and again next year some cities are doing that i guess i don't know which ones are but we're taking the, what's it called, same tax as last year or same revenue as last year rate, which used to be the effective rate. The effective rate. Yeah, that's where we are. But we're sticking with the, so the effective rate is what, what you're asking for at 0 0.3652. Yeah, that's not. Well, right. That's that's what's in the budget right now. But then there's also the, the 3712, which is last year's rate there, so you can see it. And then there's the. Mikhail. Last year's rate is the 3712, which is the first column, and then we have the effective rate, which is the 3652, and then we have the rollback rate, which is the, now called the voter approval we're, rate. We're just showing you we're at the lowest one without cutting we're at the, what we'd had the last time, which is like the, you used no. to call it the effective rate. Yeah. Then we're showing you if, if you want to leave the tax rate the same, that's what this is. If you want to go 3.5%, that's what this is. We're at the effective rate. That's what that did. And these are just my my calculated values that I've that I've done based on downloading the forms. So okay. you get the values up. Um, I can go back and get the values. No, you said these are your values. Okay. These are these are what I've done. I've calculated using truth and taxation. Um, right. On the appraisal this, district. The appraisal district hasn't calculated those yet. She's working on doing the calculations. In fact, she so. asked for our calculations so she could look at her calculations. That's correct. So. Idea for you. Oh yeah. We're planning on frequency uh, being at a, at a higher. And I don't know if she's going to, so she's sure the one that does the final certification. So I don't know if she's going to put those delinquencies in or not. So I, I'm anxious to see what her final calculation is going to look like when she sends it back. When do you expect that? Yeah. Hopefully tomorrow or the next day. She, she was asking me for some numbers today. Um, if she certifies the the collection rate at 100 percent last year she certified it at 98 percent so we did have some discussion back and forth about what where she was going to certify those collection rates at um and she said well i do have the discretion to even certify them at 102 percent i said well we've never collected 102 percent of our property taxes so i mean We've, we've had some discussion back and forth on it. So there's there are a few leeways on some of those numbers in there uh, at her discretion on some of those. So 
this is what I feel like our numbers should look like. So when we get when I get her numbers, there will be some discussion back and forth on them. So this this should be fairly close to what the final numbers look like. Um, based on those calculated numbers, this is what I have estimated that our revenue should look like, and this is the numbers that I've used in our budget. Um, this is kind of doing a direct comparison between last year's numbers and this year's numbers. Um, and if we looked at this revenue and then we kind of did a comparison, if I used last year's rate using the new assessed value, we would basically generate about eighty thousand more dollars if we went with the um, we went with the three point three seven one two. If we went with the point three seven one two rate versus the point three six five two rate, we would generate about eighty thousand more dollars um, in our budget. But, and again, you're figuring sales tax is flat. That's correct. No right, that's correct. And that sales tax adjustment rate, it has to be done based on the way the state comptroller figures right. it, and they figure it on a, a June through July, I mean a July 1st through June 30th collection rate as opposed to a September through September right. collection rate. So that's why those, well, those numbers look a little bit different, but it has to be done based on their, their dates that they put in the, yeah. If you leave, I mean, just by this, if you leave it at the leave it at the effective tax rate for 2021, and you're still getting a little bit. I mean, you're above what the revenue was last year, correct? You're about twenty thousand yeah. dollars more, but yeah. that's just because of the new value that got generated. Yeah. About nine million dollars, yes. It doesn't take into account the inflation from last year, this year, like health care and different things that go up. Yeah. So we had to really work on it to balance it. Yeah. Um, the effect of the tax rate and appraisal on a home, and this is if if you were to go all the way up to the three five three point five percent, I just I thought this was very interesting. It would be about twelve dollars and forty seven cents. Um, an average home in Mount Pleasant's about one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So, if we were to go all the way up to the three point five percent increase, you, an average home in Mount Pleasant would pay twelve dollars and forty-seven cents more a year. Um, we went in through all the the revenue. Um, I wanted to just kind of go line by line, kind of give you an idea of, of what the revenue looks like compared to, to last year. Um, overall, our general fund revenue is down by $153,000. We made some, some cuts in the way we did things. Um, this is kind of just a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, at the end of last year, our revenue was about 124 uh, four six, and this year it's about twelve point two nine three. So this is kind of how our property taxes, sales taxes, and other revenues uh, shook out in the general fund. I'm going to go through some of these individual lines. Um, Let's go back to that one just a second, though, Miss. Oh, sorry. Interest here, you've got the proposed from fifty thousand. So you. Yeah, interest rates have fallen quite a bit with oh, COVID. Nice, yeah, nice. just overall, um, this this past year, our interest rates were up around one point five. What we were getting on average on our investments around one point, in some cases, one point seven five. Right now, our interest um, is our if rates are around point nine percent. Um, so I'm going to work really hard to try to reach out and look for some more investment opportunities out there. But overall, just the fact that the market on the interest um, has fallen, it's going to be really hard to get that $90,000. Just, it's just not out there. 
um, the banks just aren't paying it. So we're going to have to, we're just going to have to make that cut. So um, it's just, if you can't get it, you can't get it. I mean, we are limited by what we can invest in by Public Funds Investment Act. So um, it's just, it's going to be one of those hard things to do. Um, police fines, again, we, we have cons considered to see a downward turn in that. We did make that cut to the budget this year, and that cut has continued to remain in this, this budget, still down $750,000. Tax-supported debt, um, this is what the property tax has paid for. Um, we're around $16.8 million in tax-supported debt to be paid. $5.8 million of that is street debt. Um, and our next year's payment is about 779300 and about 453000 of that is to be paid on the street side. Um, again, here's kind of a breakdown of our general fund expenses. Uh, $12,293,000 for 2021. Again, we are presenting a balanced budget, and it's down by 153000 as well. Is that what you said it was? Sorry. This is just um, what you're used to seeing on your um, your books. You might want to explain to them this when you talk about the street debt or the street side, and remind them that we have a street fund that it's within the debt the general fund, but the street fund has been set up. You know, a couple hundred thousand going in it, building it up, and so That's this is what we're talking we, about. We built that up about two million dollars. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, and, and, and so, I'll and I'll have a PowerPoint that goes more into detail for that. It's it's funded by franchise fees, um, and it's 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 our fund that we've set aside, and we have issued debt specifically for that on that fund that's supported by those franchise fees, and it, it just basically funds our street improvements. Not every city does that. Not, that's why I thought since some were new, we we go over that when you talk about the street fund versus the general fund. Most cities, it's the same thing. It's all in one, but in our city, it's separated out. Well, that's, that's correct. Like 40 years. It is. Some of the major changes that we did this year was we actually, um, since we've done this contract with um, our, our data processing and um, data max, we actually set up an IT department this year. And I pulled out all the data processing and all of the budgets, um, which was about $445,000. And we created a new technology department, and it has a budget of about $205,000. Um, and once we pulled it from all across the funds, it, we ended up with the savings um, there. We did leave a few um, in some of the funds, like we had to leave the utility funds um, stuff in there, um, and some of the other funds that are paying in mm -hmm. separate funds. The IT fund is in the general fund, but we ended up with the savings of about $143,000 once we finished pulling all of those in and calculating exactly what those contracts would be. Um, and so this was a, a very a very good way to figure out exactly what contracts we have, what we're paying, and make sure we itemize every single one of them and start uh, processing them down. First, this but does you a remember, couple of things. We were a little concerned because we really didn't know what we were paying, how much where on data processing. So we... We got a new group, but we also put all the money out of the budgets and put them in one. Like she said, it it showed that we had money places we didn't need, kind of thing. Does any of this savings here have to do with our grant money that we talked about? No, this does not reflect any of the grant money. The grant money is going to be in its own separate fund, not reflected in general fund. <clears throat> And I did that for two reasons. One, it's very much easier to track and audit. Um, and two, um, when we get ready to code expenses and individual line items to that, it doesn't get commingled and um, things doesn't get um, messed up. And so you know exactly where those things are going. So it just really makes it much easier to have a separate fund mm -hmm. for those. Is that why when we go through these uh, different departments, when there's when it shows data processing where, where there wasn't anything last year and it's showing this year, is this why? That's correct. Okay. 
Yeah. We want to be able to show you that each department yeah. cut their budget. But the prior year, <coughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> we ain't got there yet. <laughs> but the prior year, that money was in in another area, correct? That is correct. Okay. So, I mean, in it was some... spread throughout the... Okay. Yeah, it was kind of spread throughout. What would happen is whenever, even with the old system, whenever the um, bills would come, they would sit down and try to figure out what what a percentage to went to what department. And yeah. they would they would spend hours yeah. in my department trying to figure out where we code these bills. Yeah. And so it's just time consuming. Okay. And okay. this way it can all go to one department. We don't have to figure out, yeah. you know, how what percentage of time this this person spent with the with each department and just can go to one. That's good. And and it's then clean. It's very clean. Absolutely, it was a great move. It looks great. Yeah, and, I, just, and I had I had noticed that already when I was thumbing through, and I'm like, "What is this?" Okay, yeah. it makes sense now. Thank you. Yeah. Now we some all of make the sacrifices. Yeah. yeah. Now some of the stuff we did leave in some of the budget is the court software annual fee. We did leave that in the court budget. Um, the STW annual fee we left that in the utility fund because that's primarily for the utility billing stuff. We did leave the data max. Uh, no, the data max annual fee is in IT budget. We, we put that in there. The MyGov annual fee is the building permit software where they track all the, the building permits. Okay. And um, uh, so that was left in the building permit line. And the Fleetio annual fee was left in the fleet uh, line. So there were a few things that we did leave in the data processing lines. But for the most part, they, but they are all very much line item out the contracts have been identified because we wanted to make sure that we didn't miss anything but we tried to really streamline this budget to make sure that we could get the maximum amount of savings out of it well um right there item two for new things five laptops grant yes was that the limit because item three says a computer replacement for fire are you limited on how many computers you can get so the, grant? the grant will only pay for laptops okay. it will not pay for um, actual desktops. Um, this grant is designed for you. To, it, they want you to be able to take this and work. Kind of why they will pay for laptops, but they won't pay for desktops. They don't want people in the okay. office. They want to make this to where you can work for home. So let me ask you a question. Is there any reason, though, why even though item three is considered a desktop, that it can't just be, go ahead and be a laptop? Um, so I would have to direct that to Chief. Just asking. If we can get the grant money for I mean, it. That's what I'm just saying. If we can get the grant money. And I mean, too, <laughs> it gives Chief the opportunity, too, if that particular employee, I know it might be a desktop, but if something does come up and they need to mobilize, they can carry that laptop with them as well. What's that for? What's it for? But with a laptop, you can get a docking station and dual monitors and make it feel and look just like yeah, a desktop. That's but correct. I'm just thinking if we could save a little bit and take advantage of the grant, if we lump that in with the grant and just give them a laptop. And that grant's coming through the through the COVID stuff, right? That's correct. And that's good <clears throat> through the end of the year, so we could, we could finalize this budget and add it to that. Need to use we it could. much of that money. I agree with. I agree. If if possible. Be, I mean, but that's, that's Chief's call, too. I mean, if Chief thinks that's something he could work with, and that's something to consider. Well, let him know how many computers we gave to Chief this year. You got the, um, you got the just the six for the EMT, right, right now? Or is it was it the five for the... How many laptops did you get so far? Mm. For the, for for the EOC. Year. For the EOC. And then and there were and then there was did you have any more for the office? Uh, the thing we worked with I with Datamax to, to tell us which computers probably need to go which ones did that kind of thing. well and I realize sometimes you have to have a desktop depending on what the application is being used for because sometimes a laptop can't do what a desktop can do so anyway I was just looking at that and just trying to see where we could advantage of the grant if, if necessary look here okay I will, we will look at trying to uh, get that computer replacement done through the grant 
Um, the last on there was an employee for IT that we want, we, we really desperately need. Um, this, this would be a employee that would be on staff to do all of our moving of computers from one office to another, doing any, um, just basically helping set up printers, helping just do like programs, downloads, setting up just like little computers, that sort of thing to move around. Um, this would kind of be a person to do all of our tickets, make sure all of them are done, kind of be a go-between between between our office and Datamax. Um, right now, it's kind of being handled between me and Candace. Candace is doing the majority of that work. Um, it's, it's just a $30,000 position. It is not funded currently, but it is something that we are desperately needing in our budget. Um, it's just a, a technical position. I know y'all have said no new positions, but this is one that I would like y'all to please consider if you would adding for us. They asked me to have my assistant city manager handle this. Well, I mean, it's. This guy could serve as my assistant manager. Say, I thought Ed was going to do it. Hey, is he going to be your driver too? <laughs> yeah, you remember. <laughs> Ed can do it, right? Hey, yeah. Ed? <laughs> Ed, is he going to be your driver too? Yeah, yeah, he could be my driver too. Yeah. So, like I said, I, I know that we, you know, y'all did ask us for no new positions, so we did not. That's why this one specifically says not funded. Well, let's, let's move on. So. Uh, for the fleet, one of the other things that we did was we sort of moved all of the tires and auto equipment and all of the, the manual replacement stuff for like the, the maintenance of the fleet, and we put most of that into the shop fleet line. And this is similar to the IT stuff. It was scattered all through the budget. We brought it in to here. And the reason why we did that is because with the way that we're doing our, um, our most of our purchase orders now, it allows Chris, our fleet guy, to go in and just do his purchase orders directly into the system. Whereas before, every time a vehicle needed to be replaced, he would have to go out to the individual departments and see if they had the money in their budgets to replace it. And if they had the money, then, you know, he would kind of do it. If they didn't, then, you know, maybe that vehicle would get the part done or whatever. He'd kind of be scrounging. This allows him to manage the fleet as a whole, as a city, um, and repair the vehicles as they're needed and manage his budget. By doing that, he felt like he could reduce the entire cost of about $50,000 um, as a whole and still be able to manage the entire fleet of the city. So we did that. I talked to him. We feel like we could do this. This also, there was a, tr a transfer from the utility fund to the general fund into that fleet line of $250,000. Um, this, I split his salaries and everything between and created a fleet line, a fleet department on the utility fund. So he has some money in the utility fund for maintenance. He has some money on the general fund for maintenance to kind of control those. This eliminates that transfer between those funds and it addresses the audit concern that there were just too many transfers that didn't make sense to the auditors. Um, also, in his in his budget, he requested um, a fifty thousand vehicle lift, a parts washer, to repair the service center roof, replumb the shop, and a roof exhaust fan. Is so, the vehicle lift is that a replacement or is that an additional or <coughs> addition? I believe that's an additional lift. Yeah, that is an additional lift. That was yeah. an additional lift. Right now, they have to jack them up and block them up and crawl under and so we don't have one period oh i think we i think we have one this is this, the, for the big the big yeah the big trucks yeah this would be to to do fire trucks dump trucks and some of the heavier this is for a 50 a 50 ton vehicle i believe so some of the larger vehicles so they can get underneath but of they them jack and, them up block them up and then they crawl under them on a lot the safer and all yeah, yeah yeah this would be a lot safer Item this expensive. Why? Why did Jeff not tell me? Why what? For item like this, for the lift. Why, why have they already had? That's a good question. I I have been here that long. I'm wondering why we don't have it too. Is it going to well, build they have build? lifts. They just don't have the lift big for enough the for the bigger deep. trucks. Yeah, and when you when you and go when out and you you got them laying on their back and crawling under them, it's kind of. Is that right? 
Okay. We, can, can we look, oh, go ahead. Anthony, uh, so if we were to approve this 50K lift, the existing lifts, would we still need those, or can we turn around and try to resell those and get some money back? No, sir, we so, so this 50K lift is not universal between small to big? We could. Okay. I bet, I bet you've got big ones in there continuously. Right. Workforce, yeah. When you, when I, I just might want to say, you, you know, you come into a place and there's certain areas you look at what you might can uh, privatize, you know, contract out and that kind of thing. Uh, Chris and his group is really, I think, saving us a lot of money for what they do. Uh, I don't remember being in a city that does their fire trucks, that heavy duty stuff, whatever. He can do it all. He and his staff does it all. There may be some, there may be some uh, uh, specialty stuff that you have to go out, but he does a lot of work on our, our stuff. I think saves us a lot of That's good. good um, savings. And our existing maintenance facility can accommodate the new lift or space is concerned. How many other ones do we have? Well, there's Keith. <laughs> <coughs> um, from not for the non-departmental department this is another one where i went through and workers comp and liability insurance we get one we get one bill from tml and my staff was spending quite a bit of time going through and reallocating and splitting this bill up through all the different departments and again this is a line item that none of the departments really had any control over in their budget and it was just really creating a lot of time on my staff's part to allocate this bill out so this was just reclassed and um, moved into um, the non-departmental for efficiency purposes only. So now when we get the bill, we can just code it straight out to non-departmental. Um, it, it really didn't save us any money. It's just more of a, it, I mean, it saved us time, basically. So we can get more things done and improve efficiency. Once again, inside each department, that's notated as liability and workman's comp, but it's all TMA. That's correct. Okay. Um, um, so a few, few things. Police department, they had a second phase fire upgrade. Um, parks department requested a mosquito machine. Um, we are getting two new trucks in the parks department. Um, They're replacements, aren't they? Yes. So do we get a little? Do we get a little bit of money back on the the existing ones? Do we do a trade in? What do we do with those? I think we we auction them, don't we? Um, the street fund again. This is that fund that we fund it from franchise uh, fees. Right now, current fund balance on that street fund is two million four thirty eight eight fifty five. So that's what we have in reserve for that fund right now. Um, franchise fees. This was. Sorry. Bless you. Bless you. Excuse me. It's a little bit cool in here. That may be why. Extremely. Yeah. Well, it's freezing. Well, they turned it, it turned it off. It feels really good. <laughs> um, this this fund is funded by our our franchise fees. Sorry about that. Excuse me. Um, and we, we, this is the one that we performed the audit on, and we received the $290,000 back on that. And we did the amended budget on it, so it's really showing that we're right on target with the budget for that. We, we, 
we budgeted for um, 2021 kind of remain flat. We're still continuing to do an audit on these, and we they found some more revenue for that. And so we're going to expect probably some more additional revenue from that franchise fees. Well, with, with new industry, just take, for instance, the new uh, uh, Atwoods. Yes. I mean, well, that's true. And well, but, but the, well, we've the guys got an audit have, going on, do we not? Yes, and we just had a report today, and, uh, you know, they found several – we're doing two things. If you remember, we hired, we uh, we asked them to, to draw up a new uh, franchise agreement, a, a contract for two of the utilities that expired in 2015 or 18 or something like that. We, we should jump on them a year before they expire and redo them, but we've had them expire. So before we go talk to them about the, the and we have talked to them about, we've gotten their companies and so forth, who, who they're serving, and we found out who's in the city limits and who isn't on the list and that kind of thing. It's it's remarkable how many more we found. But really? we're we're going to be coming to you probably uh, August first September, approving those uh, uh, franchise agreements. So that's going to be additional funds. Yes, and what what we do, we'll get with them, and Carrie will draft it, and then we'll send it to them to look at, and we'll go back and forth. And when they finally agree on the agreement. We'll approve it. Then once it's approved, we'll go back to them and say, we need to check our list with your list because we're finding some that aren't on your list that are in the city, and there should be some back. Uh, but as far as budgeting goes, you're not – We don't know what that is. Yeah, no. right. So, I'm not – yeah, I don't know what that is. So no. we're, we're, so, we're kind of backing that 290 so out to kind of come in. it's, it's – yeah. So, Mikhail, but did you still create a separate – a uh, franchise fee line item in the budget so you can notate what comes in and you're showing where it's going if it's being reallocated? If you want me to do that, I can. I'm, right now, I'm just putting it all in the same franchise fee line. Just so we have a way to know or notate this much came in from this franchise. I don't know if you're keeping record of that. that. We do we do okay. do that, okay. but I mean I, I keep up with that separately on it on okay. you know in the in the individual line. I mean we we receipt all of that okay. in through our cash receipt system, but on the general ledger itself, it's just one. I mean we just have one line. That says but do you also fees. have another line or note indicator in there to say I took two hundred thousand from the franchise fee and right. moved it over here? Right. Okay, that's fine. That's all needed to know. Yeah. Um. Tourism, hotel, tax, civic center. I kind of group all these three together because they're kind of all funded together. So for me, it's 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 hard to distinguish between, between them. So for me, I mean, I almost want to put all three of them in the same fund because they're just basically transfers between each other to create them. But he talked um, about that in the audit with us this year. Yeah, they did. Right. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> I wanted to kind of get y'all's feedback before I did that um, and, and see if that's something y'all want to do. What did the auditor say? Um, well, the auditors really didn't have an opinion one way or another on this, but they always want to treat the Civic Center as a income-based, and so they always want to report that as a lost income when it doesn't make any money, but it's never going to make any money because it's, it's, more, it's subsidized by the hotel tax. So, so by putting it in here, we resolve that issue. That's correct. So that's what we need to do. Then. Well, I mean, I've, okay. I mean, that's that's, uh, that's we we discussed that I think last time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. We, yes, we did. So I mean, yeah. it's it's one of those things that right now it's three. It's really three separate budgets, and so um, I just again this, before I do that and go through the trouble of making it all one fund, I wanted to really just. Where does the revenue from tourism come? The tourism comes from uh, a transfer out of hotel taxes. I was so, going to say, so that's tourism it, it isn't a generator. It's, right. it's hotel motel it's tax. It's the hotel motel tax, and then it gets like a $20,000 transfer out from the hotel tax, and then the civic center gets a transfer out of the hotel tax, and hotel tax, all it does is take money in, basically. And then so, we also have 180000 to the, the chamber. Right, and, the, so the, and then it gets... That gets paid out of the hotel tax. How about the hotel tax? Are they are the hotels current on their service? Um, we are working on an audit of them. You know, y'all approved right. that. So they just sent me the letters that are fixing to go out to all the hotels that we're we're doing. 
and it's going to go on the letter. Current, are they, you know, where we, where yes, they are paying them. current. All of them are, are still current. So right now, if you look at where they are, um, if you combined all of them, their fund balance is around $94,000. That's where their fund balances are. Um, and the hotel motel revenue, um, we're, we're budgeting about $550,000. They're, they're about two, about two and a half percent below budget. That's where they're running right now. Um, and, and that's kind of expected because of COVID. So they're still running kind of low. This is based on what they're paying us. Yeah, based on what they're paying us. So I still went ahead and budgeted $550,000 next year. That's just because I expect the audit to, to bring back some revenue sources for us. Um, just because um, I think that they, they will go in and train them on how to collect their taxes correctly. I think they will go in and, and help them and, you know, put them on the right track with what they're supposed to be doing. Maybe find us some lost revenue there as well. So I, I think that we're, we're, I'm confident that we'll still hit that 550 next year. And, and the hotels and stuff are picking back up a little bit. Um, the last couple of times I've been around and stayed at the parking lots have been oh, full. They definitely are. So I think, I think our revenue is going to pick back up. So I, I'm confident that we'll be okay with that 550. So. I have a question. So if you combine this together, when we have the audit next year, when they, when they wrote the discrepancy up, will it be on the next year? It'll probably, if this will be next year, just because this is a 2021 and it wasn't combined for 2020. So we'll probably get that comment for one more year about the Civic Center being a negative because it wasn't combined yeah, for, yeah. for 20. They audit this year. They'll audit 930-20, but it would go away for 2021. But they'll probably also put a note in there that that's been changed in this already. It wasn't a major, it wasn't a major issue. Yeah, I mean, no. We discussed it with you. Right. No. Right. And so, and what they'll do is they'll say, you know, we'll say we noticed it, we noted, but it's been, you know, resolved. So they'll, they'll say or the comment, but then, yeah, but we, yeah, but it's been, I mean, and they may not make a comment because it's already been resolved for 2021. So, I mean, we'll, it'll just have to be a discussion with the auditors. So if y'all don't have any comments on hotel motel, we'll move into utilities. Okay, uh, utility funds, um, water sales still remains the largest source of revenue, followed by solid waste and by sewer charges. Um, I think I put that in twice. Here's a look at uh, what your water estimates are. Now, I, it, I left water estimates flat for 2021 just because I'm not sure what COVID's going to do. Um, if the schools go back into session full time and have football games in football and games and they start using their water, um, then we may see an increase in our water sales and our water revenue may go back up. If their water usages and stuff, uh, if COVID continues and the, and the classrooms are not in session and we still continue to uh, do as we were this this past you know six months then the usage is going to continue to be down and we are still going to see this this little bit of a decrease that we've seen in our water sales usage wise um, so i don't want to increase our revenue that much because i don't want to count on it and if we get it then we can go back in and bump up um, later at six months i want to really take a hard look at our revenues and our resources at six months, but I want to really be conservative on our revenue going into this budget um, because it's very important that, you know, we all know that COVID's here for the long run. Um, it's not going away anytime soon. At least that's what I, I feel. And I want to be conservative when we look at this budget. So um, it seems like our water utility side is more volatile and more affected to that than our, than our, uh, general fund side is so knowing that that's how I've kind of approached this utility fund side so I've kind of gone in with the approach that everything's going to be flat in in kind of budgeted it based on where I expect it to end up at the end of this year with the solid um, waste here you've seen uh, of course we know we've got more the solid waste uh, yes I've increased it a little venues. bit because we've added some cities They've raised their rates, 
Um, and I know that for a fact that that the solid waste again is one of those ones that hasn't been as affected by COVID. Um, and so with some of those knowns, we've I've increased the solid waste. As it but you're just basing this on what we've got now with no additional increase. Right. From other cities or anything else that might come in. You did a 5% increase based on what they said there. I did a 5% increase on the solid waste collections based on what they, they said their rate increase was going to be. I want to talk to Gene. He said, like our rates haven't been affected by it, but he said that the, since the COVID's gone in, their, their piles of garbage have increased tremendously. Yeah, about that, yeah. yeah. So it's affected them. That's kind of where the, the water rates are. Um, your debt service um, is approximately $1.6 million of debt service is what, what we have annually. Um, this is about $5,000 less than last year. Um, and it, and our, our debt service in water is a very consistent payment. If you look at where what our debt service is, it's very consistent all the way down. And that's really what you want to see on the water and sewer. Because what that does is it allows, as, you, as your city grows, as your utility department grows, um, then you can use that additional revenue for growth to put in new infrastructure. So as your, as your revenue increases, then you can fund additional infrastructure in your city. So keeping your, your, your debt level is, is like priority and primary when you're, when you're issuing new debt. So do you, do you remember what the, we paid this year for uh, fresh water, raw water? Um, I would have to look. It's, it's in the budget. Um, there's a, a whole section. I'll actually. Next slide. I can tell you. That didn't save. Um, the uh, the reason I say that is I got a, a note from Daryl Grubbs just recently. We should have got a little sooner. He apologized, but. And this year it's going to 1.41564. I think it was about one. One one point four four is what we paid. One million four hundred and forty-seven thousand. He says this one, is what I budgeted. He said one million eighty-nine is what we. Dale, I mean for this last year. Dale, page one twenty-five. What we what we budgeted. We budgeted one million four forty-seven. This last year. Before for this you came year, for 2021, that's what I budgeted. No, for 2021. but what did we do for last year? I budgeted the same. That's what we budgeted for last okay. year too. That's no, that's what we paid year to date actually. Okay. But that's still we saw three minutes. Three minutes. Anyway, to go. anyway, so it's going down. So it's going to go down. Well. Let me tell you, what was your number? One million one million four four seven three fifty. That's what we did last year. One million four one five six forty. And he said that it he said that we didn't get enough from us last year. So the true up in October is gonna be fifteen thousand dollars, not much, but we have a true up, remember? Just to meet our minimum. Yeah, what what he said was is that on our contract, remember we talked about last year, they they'll give us our our amount for next year by middle of July is what this is. And then, and then after the year ends, he'll, by October 15th, he'll tell us about what we need to true up the contract, what, what we, what we didn't need. You know, in fact, that amount next year may not be enough, but that's their, their estimate. Then at the end of the year, they say, well, we're short. So they divide that up, send us another bill by October 15th. So, he said it was fifteen thousand, which is really nominal this year. So, I guess it's a possibility since they're a, a public or private entity. Public. I guess there's a possibility of asking them to go back and try to help us with that a little bit because of all of what we got going on. Well, it's their cost for water. So, um, I mean, I mean, is that 
We could go back and ask. I it, I don't know that it would make any difference. Don't know if it would make any difference. But, 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 but I mean, I didn't know if they were if they were restricted by governmental policy that they could or couldn't. Or I mean, you know, I don't know if I can answer that. But I know that when we we bought potable water where I was before, and, and I remember getting a three hundred thousand dollar increase in next year's budget. Yeah. For, and then in in October getting a three hundred thousand dollar true up <laughs> and so it was a six hundred dollar six hundred thousand dollar turn in, in within a couple of months <coughs> but this doesn't seem to be as as drastic no i was thinking what we budgeted around 1.2 but that's so that's really good if we budget 1.44 this this seems to be less so that's that's kind of what i what I made through, I ran out of time to finish my PowerPoint, so. <laughs> now we're open to, to for questions or go to go through the budget as you want and ask about specific things. But we want you to know this is a lean budget. So when we cut anything out, uh, uh, I mean, you can't add anything in, but if you want to cut something out, um, I guess, but it's very lean, it's bare bones. I remember we talked about the gun enhancement police department had chief asked about we we left it in thinking you got a new chief coming we'll let, <coughs> let him see what he wants to do that's was our thinking behind that but that's upgrading the uh, the handgun yes that's what was that red dot sign is that what that was I mean, uh, I mean I'll, I'll just crank up it we, we keep talking about effective tax rate and rollback rates and stuff like that. I have no will to go anywhere close to a rollback rate. I don't. I really don't have any will to go anywhere past the effective rate. So, or that's you know, why we budget. And that's but what. And that's. And that's. You said that That's what this time. budget is set for. Yes. And you know, I understand the department heads are are, are responsible for. Coming up here and battling for their department, I, I completely understand that. But we're also we're charged with sitting up here and battling for the taxpayers. So I mean, I, I just want everybody to understand that nobody's uh, nobody's drawing out and saying that anybody's doing anything wrong. We're just we're up here battling, and I appreciate. I know I can see some of you have even trimmed from where y'all were uh, a month ago. So I appreciate that for sure. Ed, how many um, cell phones or wireless tablets does the city have with, is it Verizon or AT&T? Uh, no. I, I don't know if we can tell you how many. I know there's a few in the fire and the police, and uh, there may be one or two or three more tablets. Phones, we give allowance. I don't think we own any phones, do we? What, there's no employees that uh, you own phone? and phones are being paid yeah. for by the... Yeah, we, we give a those who need them not all in no, but so what i'm getting at is i don't know how many phones within the city the city's providing not just the phone but also the service you know the employee doesn't have to pay the service and what i'm getting at is is verizon we need to make sure verizon's giving us the best deal they I can see. give us on our monthly plan because you multiply that out times 12 that yeah. adds up pretty much yeah and you mentioned kind, that kind of like we heard up yeah the yeah so go back sometimes and so yeah. I'm just all I'm saying is let's go ask. Is it Verizon or AT and T? I can't, I don't know who it is. Well, but, I, I was notified that our AT and T contract is up for expiration, right. and so I know that for our AT and T portion of the the stuff that we have, I am visiting with them right now to uh, look at our contract, and I know that they have already said that they're willing to give us a 30% sa savings on our AT&T contract. So I know I'm visiting well, with them right now. And how um, how long does that contract last? Um, the years. contract we had before was a five-year contract. So We well, didn't um, try, to, try to hold them to as small a portion as we possibly can in my mind. Well, that way you can revisit it more often. If I need to, I can give you a rep to it, Verizon, but I think we need to get a competitive bid with Verizon and see which one we can get down to the lowest. I'm telling you, if you've worked well, them against each other, you'll get it down. Well, our AT&T is the one that we have our first net on. Okay. So that one, Verizon doesn't mm -hmm. offer the first net. Right. So that's the government contract rate with that. Um, so. Chief, both Chiefs and Anthony, Keith, do we have city phones?
Dufon, chief. Pick, allowance, yeah, they provide your own. We'll look at it. You, you've got a few tablets in your apartments. We might want to look at that as far as uh, data. Did we ever find out? I know Datamax was going to work on this, but I haven't heard yet uh, who our service provider is for the city, who, who provides the city's uh, bandwidth. Is it Suddenlink? Is it People's Telephone? Is it CenturyLink? I think we moved to I think we moved to Suddenlink, didn't we? We moved to Suddenlink from Verizon, I think. And I know Suddenlink typically doesn't require contracts; they're typically month to months. But we need to go get them up and see if we can get that number down. I, it may have already been renegotiated recently, but if it hasn't, it's worth revisiting. Got to help us out. Very on good. Them. Yeah. Overall, this year, without just going through all our, how many new vehicles have we bought? We did, so oh, this year? Um, you know I know we purchased the police vehicles, right? Is that correct? Three? Three I mean, police vehicles? Three. What departments? Police. police. The police. And that's kind of a thing we do every year. Keith, how many? That's the Tahoes. We're going with Tahoes. This year. Yes. Keith, how many in your, board. in your uh, trucks in your department, in, in parks? And, how many trucks? Parks, Parks is getting two. Well, no, he's talking. Are you no, talking 2020 yeah. budget? Or are you talking 2021? 2021. Oh, in 2021, the the only vehicles that we're purchasing is the two for uh, Parks. That's it. Two okay. new ones for the yeah. Parks. Is it? That's it. For 2021. Mm-hmm. That's the only vehicles. No police vehicles. They came out of this year. How many did we buy last year? I forget. There was three purchased last year. There's none this year. Um, we were going to try and see, um, based on where the money is, if we can get one more this year, um, because they were giving them a deal on the leftover. They're changing the body styles on the Tahoes. Um, so we were going to try to see if we can get one um, of the old body styles, because it would be a $15,000 savings. Um, so we're looking at that to see if we can't fit one in out of the fund balance from this year for the police department so they could potentially get four this year. How about the street department? Any you swap or move any monies around out of that to no. any other fund? No. So I did not transfer any money um, from any funds to the streets. It's just all funded from that franchise fee. Money place. out of the streets to any other place? No. No. It's funded by the franchise fees that come into that fund. So we have coming in that, that should continue. The 2.4 million, yeah, but you know, all of the street um, workers are funded out of that fund, right. and then the street maintenance is funded out of that fund. Was designed several years ago. Is it? Remember, you did. You had a fund. We didn't do it last year because we were really in trouble. But the fund was it Main Downstown Main Street. You had a thousand, some money coming out of utility and some coming out of the street fund. Yeah. Through it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if we made that. I did transfer not make that transfer. I mean, I can make that transfer if y'all want it. We um, probably need to because that fund's flowing. We can take a little bit out and put it in there. I've got a question. So for the departments, it did ask for increases, uh, the maintenance and the lift and all of that. Is there a possibility that we can prioritize the request as in one, two, three, four, whatever, and then as we go through the year, maybe not say, hey, I'm fixing to include this in the budget from day one, but as we go through the year, if we can find some savings within each department, we move it to the priority list one at a time. I mean, does that make sense? It, yeah. Let me ask you, what, I mean, what would you do with the savings? Because we're, we're no, already what I'm at saying. the you, lowest tax. You're talking about some no, tax No, no, cut no. I'm tax. talking about it within departments itself. So, so say. We really need something. Yeah, yeah, like, like, so we're. I'm not saying like well, we you just go absolutely. Let's don't do anything new. But so the fifty-eight thousand dollar lift, okay. So 
if you say, look, I, I just have to have that for the safety of the guys, okay? If you say that, then then the other things that are in there, the roof and the, I mean, I can't, I'm just from flipping, but just through my head, the roof and the parts washer and replumbing and stuff like that, are those so important that you absolutely have to have them? Or do you slide them over here to the side and go, look, these are the things that if if we find throughout the year, I don't have as many trucks break down, so I have more money than I thought I would. So now I've got an extra ten thousand. I'll buy the parts washer. Now the rest of this, I'm still not going to do it unless I find. And then all of a sudden, you end up at the end of the year, that particular department has another twenty thousand dollars. Well, then let's do sixteen thousand on the roof. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you don't. So you we, don't just go. I'm fixing to do everything at one time. We kind of do that through the budget as we cut things and say anyway, prioritize it. So it it's kind of already done. And, and then you do look at it month to month. It's things they've got to have right away, they do. And a lot of times they're into the spring or summer before they they still got some things they haven't done. Yeah. At that point, we usually try to freeze it yeah. and, and, and re-look at it again. It'd be good to do it with the police cars. You're talking about those um, have some money if you and those are available. And we know we're going to have to buy some next year. Okay, you pretty much know that the following year we're going to have to have a couple. I mean, that's just like the end of the year. You end up with one hundred fifty thousand. We're going to roll over. Okay, so maybe we don't do every single thing that we think we want to do. Okay, I mean, but at the end of the year, if we come up and we've got more franchise fees paid in that that we're expecting to come in, and we've got, and so you have one hundred fifty thousand. Maybe then you can say, okay, we'll do a couple of these things here. But if we don't come up with something like that, we can put it off till next year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I mean, think we kind of Does that make do sense? That. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I think we kind of already do that. And, uh, and as, as they go through the year, they don't all buy it at once. And, and because really all the revenue is not there all at once till after January 31st and so forth, December 31st. And then, and then, the end of the year we don't really roll money over from yeah. this by 150 it goes into the general fund or yeah. into the fund balance right and at that point uh we budget all again with for what revenue we got coming in so right. that we're not you know adding more and more to the right. budget and make make everybody um require everybody to justify what the, within the money we've got each right. year and not we're not roll it over i mean I have, I have no doubt that everybody's going to be as frugal as they can be but but you just you know, just each little, each ten thousand dollars seems minute when you're dealing with this this money, okay? But mom and pop out there, ten thousand dollars is a lot of money, you know. So I mean, you have to look at it from that standpoint. One thing that uh, you know, I know on the uh, sales tax, you've got that flat. If we and have an increase, that would be. If we have an increase, but you have to remember, you know. We, Probably wouldn't I? We'd probably the increase we've got this year. They spent that money. We all saw it, you know. Go to Walmart and the, the flat screen TV in there. I mean, people were spending that money. That, that was a one-time deal over a few months. That helped bring in sales tax. Out that, forward, you know, I uh, really think you did the right thing by not increasing forward and I just you know really hope that we maintain that we're just steady with it because without it without the stimulus money this year that uh, wouldn't uh, a lot of money spent in this town and in every town twelve hundred dollars a twelve hundred a person five hundred it was spent and using the uh, maintenance department as an example those numbers that were provided for each item that they're requesting, were those just budgetary numbers or were those hard numbers they got from the vendor or the supplier that's gonna, that we're gonna buy the product from? Are those hard we, numbers? We, we asked them to upload supporting documentation for every one of their numbers. So we, I have, most of them I have supporting documentation for their numbers. So when they say fix the roof over there, what are we talking about? What's wrong, what, I mean, tell me what the roof deal is. How, what, how bad is it? How long has it been that way? That type of deal. Yeah, Keith. Stand up, Keith. Please.
It's a shop. It's a shop. Shop. Yeah. Exhaust Good. fans. And that exhaust. was like ten grand or fourteen grand. Some shit. They've been done. Oh, they did last week. Okay. okay. Well, I think they're not, those are the things I'm talking there about. I mean, it's it's yeah. like you know, I have a you know, at, at the beginning of each year, well, if if I want to do something, it's like you know. You just kind of you kind of back it up, and if you end up with the extra money, you do it. And if you don't, you don't. And if that's the way we do it, that, that's fine. I'm just asking that we do it that way. Well, and that, and that's what we've kind of been trying to do is if okay. we can find the money in this year to do it, then we've yeah. been trying to do so it. That's so that's already been paid for. Huh? Yeah. So there's there's some couple of cuts right there. So there so, so if the you know so so if we do have the extra funds of of 150 thousand this year, I mean, is it possible to pull the 58 thousand? For the lift. For the lift out of that. that of course, that's a glaring. That's a glaring issue. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I went dyslexic there for a minute. Yeah. Eighty-five thousand. They'd like to get it to fifty-eight. That's something we can definitely look at. If that's dyslexic something moment. you want to do. <laughs> I mean, and that's definitely something we can look at doing. But I mean, that that's. I mean, it would be something that would be be something to think about. Anyway. Because it's, it's sure. going to be interesting for us to see in the next couple of days. You said from the appraisal district. Yeah. On those numbers there. Right. Yeah. And 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 I'm I'm very conservative in my numbers. So if anything, her numbers should be higher than mine. So I, I always um I'm always very, very conservative in my numbers. So and anxiously awaiting seeing those. For sure. How many employees do we have right now? Hundred sixty seven. We have hundred sixty seven. How many are we gonna with these new additions, the new park, and all replacement of people that are no longer with us, that sort of thing, how many will we have? We will have 167.5 because the EDC added a half-time position <laughs> to a full-time position. We're going to have the person. I like that. But, well, it's, but you we take count. the EDC out away from us, we have the same mm -hmm. number. Yeah, if you take the EDC out, then... It's the exact same. Even with the shuffling around and even with all yeah, the shuffling, because they, they went into somebody else's spot. And, that's and that, correct. And that's also include your new IT tech. That does no. not include my ET, my we IT cut person. That, one out. that that IT that's person was not funded. That's okay. As, I mean, I'm that requesting that position. I know it was on the Christmas. I just didn't know if that number that's was part. Right. Well, I mean, I I requested it, but next to it, it was not funded because okay. I requested it, and you know, yeah, I have. Abided by y'all's wishes to not increase personnel. Mikael, um, you weren't here when I requested it, and I got the same answer. So, but I, I'm on. asking y'all to please allow <laughs> me to add that thirty thousand dollar position. Is there is there a possibility that we can utilize some? I mean, you already have some people in there that are doing intern work. I mean, can we use an intern for something like that for a year? I mean, my my interns are going they, back to yeah. school like very very shortly like on august 15th when they leave they're going back do to school i'm budget talking to, for next year I, huh do we have that budget at the end of the i do the i do have my interns three yeah, um for three one. that's correct why do y'all do the interns i'm just curious well it's cheap my, they're they're cheap they're well i mean i use it as a mentor program like we I, we i got one from chapel hill in my office and one from uh, mount pleasant and I've, I've spent a lot of time with them, just teaching them kind of the way to do things and the way to behave and act. And um, they, they, they did, helped, a, lot of good they did a lot of good stuff for us as well. Um, they, they typed up a lot, of, a lot of stuff in this document, actually, for me and did some formatting work. Um, well, we but, the and we do pay them by the hour. So it gives them some time. Um, we paid them, what's it, $12 an hour? Um, and... In addition to them allowing them to get some on-the-job training, um, and we work directly with Mount Pleasant High School and Chapel Hill High School's um, department. That's fine. I just kind of wondered. I'm not sure. <clears throat> and then um, we also have some. We also have some out in we have that work in public works and in utilities. They work in parks. They weed eat. You know, two or three of the high school kids football kids that do that. And then we have one in the library that helps restock the shelves and the books. And, and that's, that's usually in the summer only. Only yeah. in the summer. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, when they get so out of here. It's not a full time. It's $18,000, $15,000. That's, 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 that's correct. Well, 22500 is what we budgeted. I was just roughly figuring that. 
And then yeah. the so, next year's budget was a, was the issue of the swimming pool addressed at all, either to remove it or work on it at all? Was there any money either way for the swimming pool? This we year? no, because we haven't talked about. We really need to have a hour workshop or two just to talk about what to do with it. Uh, we um, so if we decide that we need, you know do something substantial, that was over a million dollars, million and a half. Was that would around. be that's a that's a lot of money. That we got to come up with next year to do anything. Anything much. we do with that would like that would have to be a a, a bond issue to take care of it. We couldn't take it out of the budget. Are there ever any grant monies available for? Well, we'll have a parks guy coming pretty soon that'll be able to maybe answer okay. some of those and have time to do that. We've we've not chased that now. Lanny's here, our engineer, and uh, he's looked at it and he he can. In fact, he's mentioned a couple times in the past that if we're ready for him to come and talk about it at a council meeting, but our agendas have been so long. We what did the COVID nineteen? Did that not affect the pool some way? Maybe uh -huh. the way it shifted landing. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's landed on its feet. Until COVID is done away with, I just don't think it's prudent to even See, that's, consider redoing that's it. That's exactly. Say, you're fixing to open up. That's that's you're you're fixing to open up a brand new waterfall. But I just wondered, and when this budget we're talking about, if what. We're fixing to open up the third pad. We're going to have three pads, and you'll have three pads. And as far as I'm concerned right now, with the money the way it is, I don't see any money. I'm like, yeah, that that had to be a bond issue or something. We, we don't have that kind of money right now. Yeah. I mean, so I wanted to echo kind of what Sherry brought up about the student workers. Okay, where I work, we have a student worker program. And uh, what we do is employees that have children that are old enough and legal to be able to work they work uh, all year round if they, if they choose to, or you know, if we hire them on to work in the department. So I don't know how many employees we have within the city that have we have a couple of them that are old enough that could work to do, like Sherry was saying, to come in and be an extra hand to help in IT or help well, in any other department. They just don't get to work for their the school. Well, they don't have to work father. for their father or mother or whoever, but my point is those resources are available. Well, do we not, do we not have IT programs at both schools? Yep. I, I can look into it if well, that's, no. I mean, in, if I, mean, I can get a little extra money to, to help pay for it. Um, yeah. So where's the money for the internship come from now? Right now, we've reallocated the pool workers. Yeah. Pool workers. Swim, the, uh, Swim, uh, you know, because we had lifeguard we money yeah. for the, you know. So is this something new that we've started? That yes. You, okay. Yes. This was brand new. All, okay. I mean, the money was there for the lifeguards, right. and it was not being used, so we just basically reallocated the money. It's for the not lifeguards. a new program. It's new for Mount Pleasant. Or for Mount it's Pleasant. A, it's yeah. very normal to do that. Putting budgets together and running this and that. Yeah, and I mean, at my person. previous well, jobs, I've had interns every year. Because you so. can find really, some really good help doing that. We we do it every year, and yeah, we always have great help. And you don't have you know you don't have to worry about the benefits and you're yep. paying the hourly rate and it's cost less than having to contract somebody out or hire a new full time employee. I think we have two or three. Uh, I think there's two or three employees, kids involved in our thing. Okay. How much, is, how much is the insurance uh, premium increase? Do you have a, a rough figure on we, that? We put in a 12% increase. That's where we're at right now. We're still in negotiations with the insurance, but oh, right yeah. now, 12%. So right right Darlene's, 12 doing that. Darlene's doing that, it, it, that uh, negotiation. It came back at 18 or 20 or something, and so she's wow. gotten it down to, we hope, 10. But Pretty good. That's a third. How's, what's your technique, hon, on yeah, that well. getting it from 18? <laughs> To twelve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I should know by then. If she I told should me. know by the end of the week. How much did we increase yeah. last year? Do you remember? Yeah, I think it was pretty late in the last year. And that yeah, increase is just to kind of maintain what we currently yeah, offer, right? To yeah, that's maintain. correct. It has a, yeah. We don't change coverage or deductible. It's just it's just a premium increase. That's, that's right. correct. Okay. Yeah. High deductible. Yeah. This is our third. Increase 
One of the other things uh, in the in the uh, financial part of employees uh, back in 1970, there's a thing called longevity. Employees get four dollars a year per month per month for each year of service, and uh, that was a law that was passed back in 1974 for <coughs> police and fire uh, get that, and that's be four bucks a a month, which is not a lot. Most of this, and and um, again, that was in '74. We do that. Every every city I don't does that. But a lot of the other cities are have got those way up high. I mean, the four dollars is the 1974 rate. That's the law. That's the minimum. A lot of cities have that up, and and I think on the year that we're not having a salary increase, it would might be a good idea. It's a good time to consider raising that a dollar or two dollars, maybe six dollars per month for each year. And I think that the amount, we haven't figured it because I, I said we got to leave it out because we don't have much money, but the amount is maybe $10,000 or, I mean, because it's not a lot of money. Now, Darlene it is because she's been here for so long. I'm teasing. But but uh, for most employees, it's it's paid out. The police and fire, you have to pay it every month. But for most employees, you pay it like between Thanksgiving and first of the year, first of December, and it's kind of $100 or $150 or something like that. So, um, uh, it's probably not a bad idea to consider doing that at this time rather than well, if we had any money, <laughs> we could do it. Uh, There's no raises in there. Is what I'm saying. Just to follow up back on the vehicles that we're looking at getting, just a question on that. Do we seek out multiple seal, sealed bids on those, or do they just come from one I think dealership? they come from the buy board mainly. Think, normally that's in the buy board. But, but which, which they do, know, they do they, the bids. And they, they do the bid. They go out and get multiple bids. Yeah, and then they we can buy off of the buy board for the state. We have a lot of overtime each year just in various departments. Yep. Uh, fire's killing us. I know. <laughs> Hey, Ed. Well, they're probably going to go. They're looking at. They spent what about 150 thousand this year. He thinks it's going to be about 300 next year. Because he's been keeping our our minimum is 10 10 at the at, at each station. Yeah. Is that right, Chief? Yeah. <coughs> but we've been keeping just nine for this last year. But we might have to keep so many, don't we? Yeah, you got to keep so many for each truck, and you got to have somebody to back uh, the supervisor there, and so forth. So, um, well, Chief, you can explain that if you want to go ahead and tell them where we were and what we're doing. His, we cut him back to about what he spent last year, but but um, we don't want him to close any stations or only half time. Well, we've got to have so much because to keep the insurance rates at a certain. That's level. right. But he, but one of the things we noticed, he he was going up a big increase on his overtime, so we cut him back to. We had that discussion today to what he had last year. We're not sure he can maintain that all year long. Yes. Well, he's pretty sure. Basically, in years past, we've used part-time firefighters to fill in for our leave, and uh, uh, that program is just not feasible anymore uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, they can only work so many hours based on TML retirement and all that that we didn't used to have to go by. We went by the commission's regulations, which meant they could work a lot more hours than what they can now. <coughs> and, and, to, and to be able to buy or uh, to, uh, to get guys to come in for $10, $15 an hour uh, when they can only work like maybe one shift a week, then it's hard to keep anybody like that. It's also uh, for buying their protective equipment. Um, our bunker gear now has a shelf life on it. So <coughs> since there's a shelf life on bunker gear, it's hard to, uh, you can't just go over to Casco, which is our vendor over in uh, Shreveport. You can't just go over and buy it anymore. You got to order it. Well, then they got to make it. So it's about a three to four month process to get the gear. So with just a lot of different things. So, um, we still have to have people working. So we have 10 people assigned to each shift, the deputy chief and, uh, and the rest of the, the crews. 
to fill two stations. Um, when one of those is off, somebody's got to fill in for them. And so, again, we were using part-time to do that. But now, since we don't have part-time, it's going to be full-time folks to do that. And it's going to cost more to do that. Like I said, it's uh, we're, we budgeted about 150000 this year, but I'm, I'm sure we're going to use more than that probably. <coughs> so uh, boils down to we, we have to have uh, – Texas Commission on Fire Protection says we cannot go inside a structure unless we got four people on scene. So if we get there with three and your house is on fire, we can't go in. We can do a lot of stuff on the outside, but we can't go in. So uh, you know, it, it boils down to the National Fire Protection Association <coughs> says we should have 15 people on every structure fire. Well, we go to the county, we take four. So we're already behind the curve on manpower needing to be on, on street. Luckily, uh, we do not have, uh, it has not occurred many times where we've been uh, uh, double booked, so to speak. For example, yesterday we went out in the country club to a house that was on fire. You know, luckily everybody was in the station. We got there real quick, got a knockdown. But if we had been out in the county on a wreck on the other side of the county, and uh, a wreck out here on South Jefferson like we were a couple of weeks ago when we were there for over an hour trying to cut a family out of their van, that house would burn down. So, uh, you know, we, we did a fire study in 20, 2016 that basically says we should have three fire stations fully staffed to, to meet the needs of, of Mount Pleasant and Titus County. And that's the other thing. We cover the whole county. It's not like a 30... A, a, a 16,000 population, we're covering 36,000 uh, population plus the transit folks that are in here, which it's about, I think, 80,000 something a day. That's kind of a number I've heard. So, uh, you know, we, we are extremely, uh, we're understaffed for what we're being asked to do. You, you had originally asked for six in your, <coughs> in the prior budget meeting. Uh, and obviously, you've taken those out for right now, but uh, I, he, I mean, he didn't you, take them out. Well, I we know. took them out. I, I understand that. <laughs> I, I took them out. But 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 understanding what we had going on, how long? I mean, obviously, we're going to spend a little more uh, on overtime and stuff like that. How long do you think we can squeak by like yet another year, possibly two years at at, at our current level? Current level of overtime or current no, level? No, current level of manpower. Um, I mean, I mean, just, I mean, uh, understanding it, you, you think we need more, but it's just, you know, can we chew on a piece of leather for another year? And well, we're, get we're actually postponing. We're, we're talking about, we were supposed to renew the contract this year and start hopefully adding people and With working towards those With stations. Accountings. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we're, we're going to postpone. That's what we talked about is just extending the contract for another year. Okay. See what how COVID shakes out. Yeah. And then as we go into this next year's budget, then start preparing for for trying to, to move forward on what right. was recommended in the fire study. Okay. Well, Park Chief, is one employee, one firefighter with his percent Re retirement. What what does one cost a year? Uh, salary and benefits is about uh, probably about 62 or three now if, if we bump up uh, that's just for salary and benefits uh, their their ensemble is about eight thousand for that and so, their training yeah training it takes about ten thousand by the time you put the, the radios the some of the other equipment uh, marker gear uniforms and all that's probably another eight to ten thousand get them ready to go besides your salary and benefits so so if we're ever two you get 125 a shin a year yep. salary initial. salary wise uh, but not not counting your initial not yeah your it's initial about investment. with the adjustment on the salary and stuff we're doing this year because i think the number we used last year before us is about sixty thousand starting off and we we've, we've increased pay and benefits so it, it's going to be right. 62, 63, somewhere along so, the way. So if we could skate by this year and maybe possibly add a couple of next year and then a couple more the following year and kind of build up or? It, it would actually work better for us in threes. Okay. We've got three shifts. Okay. But, but you've asked the county in the past, they've 
they've participated in getting help with half of the hire. Yeah, the, the county has helped fund some of the firefighters in the past, split the cost, which again, I think that's kind of what we're looking at is, is trying to, uh, you know, um, Get the county to help more yeah. on, on. Well, if we can, if we can extend that contract for another year, and then possibly all of us, us and the county, look at splitting three, and then maybe the year that splitting three more, it'd be, be a little yeah. more manageable. Yeah, it's, overtime. Yeah. It, it, we get to a point if if we yeah. were to fully staff, well, even if we didn't fully staff the station, there's a point where if we get right. enough, uh, be able to just lock down to keep ten on duty. Yeah. If we had at least a couple more on each shift. Okay. It, it would knock our overtime. Well, there'll be, there'll be a time. There'll be a time where it doesn't make but sense. Chief Chief spent one hundred fifty thousand on overtime this year. He's requesting three hundred and fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand for next year. And uh, we we took him back down one hundred fifty and said and, and he said I I'm going to run out of money. I can't do it. So Chief, so, yeah. so Chief in that two thousand sixteen study do they recommend where that third station should go somewhere out south uh, okay. a, really the the ideal location is the uh my call parkway inter right there by the airport that intersection it would allow us to get up on the inter or the uh the loop go into the southeast part of southwest part of the city jump on 34 17 go out in that part of the county or get on jefferson to come up into the city uh, whether that land would be available or not uh, so when we, get, we when we get to that point, though, to decide to do that, do you know if there's any type of programs or grants out there that could help us financially with the, the uh, dollars to check. build the facility? Yeah, we we can check, but it, there's don't and know it, any. Of and again, right too, here. we could incorporate the county because you know we help support the county yeah. every day. And with, without us, and the county would be in trouble. That's why I was going to ask. So and I, just in round figures. And I'm just off the top of your head, and if you're not able, then don't put yourself in a corner. But what percentage of our efforts are spent outside the city limits, and 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 what percent of your budget? I mean, are they? And I'm not trying they're to dump on the county. They're paying 24 percent of our cost. They're paying 20. Yeah. But, but are they getting more than 24 percent of our services? Exactly. Yes, I, I don't have it with me tonight, but we've worked up. Over a five-year period of what we do in the city and what we do in the county. Yes. In the the instance like structure fires, rescues, uh, the uh, the high hazard instance, uh, we actually have more in the city, but we it takes more time out in the county. So even though the runs in the county are less than what we do in the city, we actually spend more time out in the county on those calls. So it, it's kind of a you go by numbers, best I remember, it's more in the city, but out in the county, it takes us longer. When we're out there, it's, you know, it just takes us yeah. longer. To, and back to your point, yeah. when when you're working it something is, out in the county, it leaves the city oh, vulnerable. Has, absolutely. We leave, we'll, we'll never well, leave the city completely, yeah. but it's only going to leave one engine company with yep. four guys on it. Yep. And if we can't keep everybody on those trucks, then it could end up with three guys on that truck or two guys on that truck. and. That's just bad for everybody. But I'll add, we've we've had a good working relationship with. Oh, absolutely. It worked very well. Right. Absolutely. I've, I've talked with us, us the same taxpayer. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same, same people. people. Same taxpayer. Yeah. That's yeah. The same, you know, that's the our, same people. And by no fault of their own, our volunteer fire departments are just not what they used to be. The, it's yeah. and that's nationwide. It's not yeah. just Titus County. Mm -hmm. It's it's everywhere. People you know, don't want to. Because don't of the have school. the time or don't want to volunteer, it's yeah. just the sign of the times. And in the in the schooling requirements becoming a little more stringent as well. Yeah, when I got on as a volunteer, it was like here's your gear, here's a pager, go to the yeah. next fire, and now you know it, we just can't we can't do that anymore. You know, it's, they do background checks, they do driving records, they training. do you have to have training before you're going to be allowed to do stuff, and and that's one of the things too when you tell a volunteer fireman or a prospect that. Here's everything you got to go through and all the training and stuff. They're like, I ain't got time to do that. And, you know, so, yeah, it, it's more than just showing up and going, hey, I so want to be The guys team. that do show up, they're really, they're really yeah. doing something. Yeah. We're, really, we're down to where we have two. Really putting their self out. We have two volunteers left on our department, and they're really support. Yeah. They're not fire, firefighters, right. but they are, they do, uh, they help a lot on the outside doing sports right. stuff, you know, helping right. with the hose, right. you know, 
and that's kind of the same thing our volunteer fire departments are doing right now is is uh they obviously we have to have water in the county because we don't have hydrants so they bring us the water in the tankers and then they help do the the peripheral stuff on the outside wildland fires which again we haven't had a wildland season a bad one in a while this may be it and from one o'clock in the afternoon till sundown that's when we run our fires that's when volunteers are at work and so it it, it could put us in a big strain this year with uh, if we have a wild season wildfire season all right thank you and that was just a simple question about overtime <laughs> but you ask him a hard question sorry no no i'm teasing Good I job, thank you. I just like to say thanks to all the department heads for all that you've uh, yes. all the hard effort, and uh, we we realize we appreciate it. And uh, also, mm -hmm. I'd like to say I think tonight may be Debbie Corbell last night with us as far as uh, and boy, when you retire, what Debbie this coming Friday, look to you in your retirement. Uh, thanks for all your many years of service to our city. Okay. Debbie has told me that this will not be the last night she'll be with us. Okay. Uh, she plans to be with us all the time. Just as we, <laughs> we certainly appreciate it, Miss Debbie. Yep. Absolutely. Got something else, Michael? Nope, I'm good. I know you had that looking like you're ready to go. Sorry. <laughs> the council has anything further? Why don't we actually vote on this? Meetings in August. Yeah. Our, when the, last the last meeting in August. We'll have a public hearing. It will be there will be a special called meeting um, August twenty eighth, I believe, and it will be voted on at that. To meeting. vote on it. You'll still tweak it a little bit when you get the appraisal numbers. I will. The, yeah. The, this this kind of was to give me an idea of what y'all liked about the budget, what you didn't like, what you wanted removed, you know, that kind of stuff, what you wanted added in. So once I get the final appraisal numbers, um, I'll go back. I'll, it'll tell me if we have more revenue, less revenue, whatever it may be. Um, and then I'll tweak it. And then at the next meeting, y'all will vote on the tax on the proposed tax rate. Um, and so then not this next Tuesday, but the, the next August fourth. Yeah. August fourth, which is next Tuesday. Right? Next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. yes. Which so is we actually do our first vote next Tuesday night. Proposed. That's correct. Our, yeah. Um, the, the timeline is very compressed now because of the new rules with the um, SB2. Moving so, up, what, 30 days? Yeah. Yep. It, you basically will adopt this budget within the next 30 days. We only have one public hearing now. Um, when is that? Two. Um, so you'll have, the basically the rule is this Tuesday you will adopt your, your propose, well, you won't adopt, you'll propose your tax rate. And then the next two weeks, you'll have your public hearing on the budget. And then the two weeks after that, you'll have your public hearing on the tax rate. And then the next Tuesday, you'll I didn't think it. they voted on anything this Tuesday, do they? They have to set the proposed tax rate because then... Oh, I'll so they're voting on the tax rate and approving the tax rate? No, no they're no, proposing no, the tax rate. So now, now we have to vote on a proposed tax rate you and do. then... That's new, and then we vote on the tax rate later you vote, on. You vote. You have to vote, on, and you have to take a record vote on your proposed tax rate, um, and then that has to go in the paper. Um, and then once you do that, then the next meeting will have a um, next, the following Tuesday you'll have like a public hearing on it, um, and then the following Tuesday after that you'll have a public hearing on the budget at like your regular meeting, and then we'll have a special hearing after that have a approval of the budget and the tax rate. I'm really proud of the employees of the city. Y'all impress me. Most of you impress me all the time. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of the city. And I think y'all all stepped up this year. It's been tough on everybody. So appreciate everybody hanging in there and doing the best they can to watch your budgets. Always want to give more money. Sometimes it's just not there. A lot of, you know, and I, I really appreciate all y'all have done, all of you. Uh, we got a great city. We have a good looking city. Y'all do a good job keeping things. The buildings are clean. By and large, I think you service the public really well. And I appreciate all you've done this year to try to bring us something that we can not choke the taxpayers with. Thank you for that. Very good. Anybody else? 
Okay, again, thank you all department heads and uh, the staff. Uh, at this time, we'll open the floor for a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Motion by Mr. Tim, I'm sorry, that's by Mr. Jerry Walker, second by Mr. Tim Dale. At this time, we are adjourned.